Okay, we'll call the uh, meeting back to order. I think we're, uh, we're back. It's kind of nice going uh, old school there for a while. So, let's uh, confirm, uh, well, it's a, any addition or deletions? I'm way off now. To the agenda? No? We get a motion to adopt? Absolutely. Mr. Reed, thank you. All in favor? That is carried. Thank you. Minutes from our last meeting. Councillor Flowers? Okay. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Moving into delegations. Mr. Murphy. Good evening, Mayor Young, um, members of Council. Uh, the first delegation tonight is the Parks and Recreation Committee, and they're going to be presenting their uh, 2019 work plan. Um, just before we get into that, I'd like to say that uh, this is not going to be a comprehensive list of all the tasks that the committee is going to be uh, performing over the course of the year, but more of an overview of the 2019 priorities as seen by the committee. Um, a little background, the Parks and Recreation Committee was formed in May of 2018, and under the leadership of Councillor McFadden, was very busy for the last half of the year. Um, 20 act 2018 activities included a delegation day held in June, uh, where 24 separate user groups were invited and uh, the committee saw uh, 10 formal presentations. Uh, the committee debated a multitude of parks and recreation issues and in early 2019 worked, on, worked to develop a proposed work plan based on Council's priorities, the delegation day and uh, community feedback. So if approved, uh, February's meeting will focus on uh, delivering a recommendation for an off-leash criterion uh, for Council's consideration on February 25th. Uh, March will be dedicated primarily to uh, work on the proposed Horse Creek annexation site and a one uh, of the two delegation days to be held in 2019. April, May and June will be no less busy for the Parks and Rec Committee. The uh, committee will review the 2019 to 2021 parks budgets and will be delving into our leisure services delivery <clears throat> through soon to be formed subcommittees. Uh, so tonight we have uh, members of the committee are here to speak to some of the proposed work plan. Uh, Don Tommy uh, will cover exploring the development of a sponsorship policy. James Darby is here and will speak uh, to the possibility of Cochrane hosting an Alberta winter, summer or master games. And uh, Jacques Sauvé is here to explain the format the committee will use to recommend an off-leash criteria. Thank you, Mr. Murphy, Mayor, Council, thank you for uh, having us tonight. Uh, talking about uh, seeking approval for the board work plan for 2019, one of the first items we're talking about is supporting the development of a sponsorship policy. And going forward, we felt it was critical that all stakeholders have a good understanding of what sponsorship and a sponsorship policy would be about. So we've got a definition up there on the screen. And really, it's important to understand that it's not philanthropic, it's not a donation, and it's not about gifts. It's really about building a partnership, and a partnership that um, there are clearly defined expectations on both sides, and there's benefits to both parties. So it, this speaks to some of the benefits, again, sponsoring land, facilities, structures, service programs, or events, and how those can help the, uh, the town move forward with that. And at the same time, the corporate entity that may come forward as a sponsor is looking at how they can connect with their demographic, how they can build their brand, and ultimately find more customers. So it really is a partnership, and that's one of the things that really makes it different from a donation or a gift or, or the whole philanthropic um, idea. Yeah. Yeah. Right there? Yeah. Okay. So again, the purpose and objective of the sponsorship policy Ultimately, it needs to provide clear guidelines, principles, and success measures to support moving forward with sponsorship initiatives. And again, it's about those defined benefits, and it needs to really speak to contributing to the economic, social, sporting, environmental, or culture development of the, cultural development of the town. So we're really looking forward to having administration bring forward a draft policy for the board to take a look at to provide feedback to and, and hopefully be able to then um, make recommendations to council for approval. And we hope that you'll approve this as part of the, the 2019 work plan. Thank you.
Mr Mayor, uh, councillors, um, thank you very much for allowing me to uh, talk about uh, this next presentation. Um, having been heavily involved in the Arctic Winter Games of 2018 uh, up in the Northwest Territories and now the Alberta, uh, sorry, the Airdrie 2020 Alberta Games um, uh, manager, I uh, would like to put forward the work for the, the Parks and Recreation uh, and the work plan for how Cochrane could possibly host an Alberta Winter Games, a Summer Games or a Masters Games. Um, just to give you some sort of background on, on you know, where all the games sit, the uh, Alberta Culture and Tourism is where, who own the games, uh, and effectively a city or a town would um, bid for a games, um, and the 2022 games is available at the moment, it might be a bit too close, but there are some games available then. Uh, and then the host committee, whoever that is, um, would work closely with Alberta Sports Connection, provincial sports organisers, which are the, basically the governing body for the sports, uh, and then we select a, a board of directors and then we, we work for a year and a half or two years to deliver a games um, winter, summer or, or um, uh, seniors games. Give you some uh, ideas of the, um, what would be showcased in any of the games. And you can see uh, a, 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 an array of sports um, that are delivered in all the games. Um, the Masters and the Winter Games provide a lot of, um, a lot of games. Uh, and you, I'm sure you can already see people will be looking at those games and thinking, you know, we, we don't have any of those facilities. You know, we don't have many of the, of the um, sporting venues that are on there. Um, but we... we um, we sort of look at uh, Alberta as a whole, and, it's, and Alberta is split into eight zones, uh, uh, who we generate 3,000 um, athletes and competitors that come down to, uh, you know, to do their sports in whatever city or town that is selected. Just for information, we are zone two, uh, Cochrane um, and the Calgary area. Um, so uh, what the work plan would, um, would include is do we have the, enough facilities within Cochrane to host a provincial size uh, event, be it summer, winter or, or our, um, uh, seniors games. And I think we're in a great position in terms of how the Horse Creek Road uh, recreation project and how we can look at that and investigate what we would need to host any of these games, what sort of venues would we need to, uh, to think about to be able to put a hand up and say, you know what, we would like to bid for one of those games, and guess why, because we have all those facilities here. So there's a lot of, in, you know, a lot of uh, investigatory work to see if we can, um, uh, you know, if we, can, if we could put, a, uh, put on a game to that magnitude. That's me, thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council. As you know, one of the most contentious and rather visceral debates that has taken place in the community is that of off-leash dog parks, mostly because nobody wants off-leash cat parks. But one of the things we're trying to do in the, uh, with the Parks and Rec Committee is define some clear and concise guidelines and criteria to help guide Council and administration on policies around where we can have off-leash areas. Obviously, we're looking at two possibilities, having off-leash areas in existing or close to re existing residential areas, and obviously in new uh, developments, and I think we had a beautiful example of that tonight from Melcor. Um, so yeah, we're working on refining those, those criteria to try to make it as clear as possible, like what kind of boundaries are we looking uh, at, what kind of uh, consultation will we have with existing residents um, to, to determine you know, where we can have these off-leaf parks. Um, I know that you've been presented with some proposed areas by the off-leash advocacy group, and I believe in the September, February 25th council meeting, um, we will be making recommend recommendations whether those are suitable based on the criteria that we come up with. Um, so yeah, in a nutshell, we already have uh, a few dog parks, uh, some big, some small, some teeny tiny. Uh, one big beautiful one where we can walk along the river. So, you know, we've, all, we've made some progress just in the four years since I've been in Cochrane. There's been, you know, what, uh, one, two, three, four new ones. So it's, there's been some progress made and a lot of us are very happy to see that. There's some, um, some new ones coming up that the developers have promised in new developments as we just saw tonight. But uh, again, some other areas, 
you know, the, the, the contentious issue is when they border with existing uh, properties and there's always some objections there. So we need to see if there's criteria that would make it, make it acceptable to those residents. So that's what we're working on and really hopefully we'll come up with some nice, clear uh, guidelines for, for administration and for council to, to follow. Thanks. And that concludes the uh, presentation. Uh, we're happy to take any questions. And administration is recommending option one. Okay, thank you, Mr. Murphy. So just for clarity, um, you're not asking for input on the plans themselves. You're asking us to approve the, the uh, work plan, so that list of items to work on. That's correct. Okay. All right. Councillor Reed, your buttons. Oh. Your, le your light works. Hey, it works. Thank you. Um, uh, I love the work that's being done here. Uh, I guess my question is to administration is um, there would seem to be a lot of heavy lifting would have to go on to support this work plan and has that been allocated in terms of resources for this coming year? Uh, through the chair to uh, Councillor Reed, um, the, the workload uh, that you speak of um, is being absorbed uh, through the parks and open spaces. Um, section, um, the uh, leisure services section, and through uh, community services. So um, we, uh, we are allocating time to these projects, yes. Okay. Councilor McFadden, this is your committee. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so I did definitely wanted to uh, move the recommended action that the work plan for the Cochrane Parks and Recreation Committee uh, be adopted. Uh, I did want to thank the group for all the work they have done to date and all the work they are gainfully signing up to do in the future. Um, when it comes to the work and how this is going to be delivered, um, and I've said it before, I see work coming to this committee in a number of ways. One, council directed uh, when we have items we'd like them to address. Uh, secondly, uh, when administration sees items they would like them to uh, speak to. And then also this list is uh, partially driven by um, what the uh, group themselves things they need and a gap that they would like to work on. Um, they have, I think, in delivering the workload, uh, the committee is going to see a, a mix of um, uh, town resources providing that, but the group is also committed to being more than just a governance role. They're prepared to step up into uh, kind of a subcommittee type structure to uh, do a lot of the, uh, the heavy lifting. Very uh, excited group for sure. That's all I know. Okay, great, thank you. Councillor Flowers. I just wanted to say thank you for the presentation and all the work I know that Councillor McFadden and the rest of you have done on this committee. It's, it's been a vast uh, array of topics. I'm looking forward to seeing what you come up with for the dog parks and I just wanted to stress that keep in mind that we need places for people to walk and bike as well. The dog parks are really important but we, we can't lose sight of the fact that others don't want to use dog parks and they need a place to go as well. And I look forward to hearing what you come up with this year. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Fideko. Um, I just have a couple quick questions. I, I know that maybe it's not part of the work plan now, but where's the Rocky View school site involved in, uh, in this, I guess, for servicing and things like that? Because I know that's an important piece of, obviously, uh, part of the property. Do you mean the quarter section? Yeah. yeah. Uh, through the chair, uh, Councillor um, um, uh, so the, the committee will play uh, the role of um, um, deliberator and uh, information gatherer. They'll, they'll also um, be the, uh, the community engagement component of that, that project. Um, it's, it's quite a diverse uh, project in that uh, engineering is going to play a certain role, uh, community services is going to play a certain role, uh, parks and recreation is going to play a certain role. Um, um, so it is all going to come together um, uh, to, um, and sorry, and the, uh, the, the committee is going to be holding two more uh, delegation days this year um, to hear from user groups and, and the public, if that answers your question. Uh, yeah, and I guess uh, the only other comment that I'm, I'm happy to see, I mean, I, I don't know how much time will be spent on, I guess, maybe investigating, you know, whether we should or shouldn't have like a winter, summer or master's game. I guess uh, the one good thing is I'm glad that we're kind of foreseeing that maybe we could. So rather than building something that then we restrict ourselves that we never could, um, I'm happy to see that being a consideration. I guess it would just be, do we 
spend so much time investigating it that then we're not kind of paying attention to all the other stuff that maybe is more timely and that's like the rec fields and all that kind of stuff. So I guess, you know, while we're looking into the far ahead future, I'm happy to see that, but I guess I just don't want to spend so much time on that that we're delaying the other stuff that needs to get done. That would be my only comment. I think uh, Councillor McFadden will take that back to the committee. Um, just before you get into that, Mr. Devana has a comment on uh, the quarter section, I believe. Yeah, I would, um, the Horse Creek annexation master site plan is very uh, uh, important project. Um, it, uh, we need to have, uh, we want it to go through the committee so they can determine where the, you know, where it's, it's school site, where all the ball fields, soccer pitches, any buildings that are gonna be on the site so that that will ultimately inform the servicing plan. And we have a timeline where we would like to have this work completed by the end of April. So and, uh, if uh, we get that, uh, the advisory committee to help us and council to ultimately approve it, the project also has an impact on the tri-site projects. And I just wanted to mention that once we know what's going up on the hill, that will help inform us and assist us when we're planning for especially the Fifth Avenue site. Okay, thank you for that. Councilor McFadden, you wish to uh, address the workload? Sure. It's, uh, so the two questions, one was about the priority setting, and uh, we, we are aware of that the uh, Horse Creek Road site uh, has a, the greater priority, and of course next month we're dealing with the um, off-leash park questions, and then uh, the other two items will fall later in our work plan. And we hopefully, thing luck, we'll be reporting back to you in December with the results of all that work. Um, uh, in addition to the Horse Creek Road site, uh, it was mentioned, but just to highlight it, uh, we are going to be moving ahead with a delegation day specific to those stakeholders involved or perceived to be involved in the Horse Creek, the destination uh, sportsplex site. Um, I've already started to have some of those conversations, hearing feedback from people that want to be able to have a say on that. So we'll be making sure that uh, we are reaching out uh, very deliberately to those stakeholders or self-identified stakeholders to make sure that they are heard. Okay. Uh, seeing no more questions. Oh, do you have one? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Every time I look over, your light was off. <laughs> it's the flashing part. Right. Councillor Wilson. I, I had more of a, a, a general question about the committee. Um, I was, I was pretty excited to hear, in particular, the first couple things we just heard there about the sponsorships and the games hostings are very interesting things to hear. Um, and I'd be so supportive to hear more from them. That's, that's great. Uh, overall, the committee, when it was struck last year, I thought we, we were hearing from a lot of different sports groups, from rugby to minor ball to pickleball to on and on. There were several different groups that were uh, approaching council in general. And I was just wondering how this committee changes that structure. So if we were to have a sports group in Cochrane looking for a certain, they, they have an agenda or something that they don't think is being done well enough, do they come before the committee first and then the committee comes to us with recommendations? Or I was just wondering how we've structured this in general as it's new to me still. Uh, so through the chair, uh, Councillor Wilson, um, we will be having a delegation day uh, in March. The date is yet to be set. Um, they will be set at the next uh, Parks and Recreation Committee meeting uh, on the 6th of February. Um, so the, um, that will be a great opportunity for a specific user group um, or club to come before a Parks and Recreation Committee to, um, to plead their case and, and to, uh, to make uh, the committee aware of, of their needs. Um, and then that, in turn, would be uh, translated into a recommendation to Council. Great, okay, and, and so this committee, do they, do they handle all sports group um, questions or concerns or can they still present directly to council? Is this an intermediary or is this, I, I'm, I'm trying to understand the mandate of the group, I, I suppose, a little more clearly. So the mandate of, uh, of the committee, um, in fact, the terms of reference um, speaks to speaks to that uh, specifically, but there's there's nothing in the terms of reference for the Parks and Recreation Committee that prohibits uh, user groups from coming to Council. Okay, thank you. So the short answer is they could come to both? Right. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Councillor McFadden, do you wish to add to that? Yeah, one of the, the uh, benefits I think of this group is any of those stakeholder groups, um, you know, can of course appear before Council and um, 
But what one of the real benefits of this group, and of course the delegation days that we're working on, is that we're providing a place for all of the groups to come and be understood and kind of get on the radar, very deliberately so. And uh, so it seems to be working to date. Uh, the group has gone through a fairly uh, heavy education process. Um, I've had a review of the open space master plan, so we understand the existing policies in place. I've had a tour of the Spray Lakes uh, facilities, so we understand the offerings there, and have done, you know, committed to ongoing engagement with all of the different user groups. So uh, I don't know. For my part, I kind of look at it as kind of a an outlet for a lot of those pressures that have been building up. But um, certainly, uh, you know. What that group does is in the terms of reference, any group can come and speak to us, um, and of course council can give any work that they want to the, uh, to the uh, committee. So. And we're evolving, so <laughs> if we make a mistake, we'll fix it. Okay, thanks very much for that. I'm excited about this group uh, in general, and thanks to all the, for all the work, Councillor McFadden and uh, Mr. Murphy. It sounds uh, very positive. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm scanning for lights. Yeah. No more questions? I would just like to take the opportunity to thank the committee members, especially the ones that presented tonight. Thank you for your time and your volunteerism in our community. So thank you for helping us build a community. And um, second, I think it would be, I think uh, prudent that you add to your list the quarter section. I know you already have it and you're already gonna see it, but I think I, for me, when I make a list, I like to know there's one I can cross off and if it's by April, that would be uh, a win for the committee to uh, have weighed in on that. So I, as much as it is just a you know, detail, I think it should be added to the list so it's not missed. So Absolutely. thanks again. Okay. Uh, motion on the floor, I almost forgot. Uh, to receive as information? Oh, approve the work plan, okay. Everybody's clear? I am now, thank you. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. Next delegation, FCSS and the United Way. So Welcome. good evening, Mayor Janung, members of council. I'm here tonight to introduce the 2019 funding recommendations for both the FCSS and the United Way grants. As you know, FCSS provides many different community programs designed to strengthen our community. One of the programs that we offer is providing grant funds to local groups who meet the FCSS mandate and are addressing important social needs within the community. The Town of Cochrane also has an agreement with Calgary and Area United Way to provide funding to local groups who meet the United Way mandate and are also addressing social needs. FCSS and the United Way work together to determine the local needs, priorities, and minimize application and reporting processes for groups applying for funds. So it is my absolute pleasure to introduce Marg Stevens, who's on our FCSS advisory board. She'll be sharing the funding recommendations for 2019 on behalf of our board for both FCSS and United Way grants. This year we had $120,000 available to support local groups, $50,000 coming from FCSS and seventy dollars from United Way. So I'll now pass it over to Marg. Good evening. Thank you, Mayor and Councillors. Um, I'm going to have to put my glasses on, sorry. Um, so here are the mandates for FCSS and FCSS is committed to supporting locally driven preventative social initiatives which enhance the well-being of individuals, families, and communities. Funded programs are expected to be preventative in nature, support, edu support, educate, build awareness, develop leadership skills, strengthen family life, and promote volunteerism. Programs are monitored for successful outcomes. The United Way of Calgary and area, their mandate is committed to supporting programs that are focused on poverty reduction, helping children and youth achieve success and building strong communities. All funded programs are expected to address a need in the community and build on com community capacity and strengths. Programs are monitored for su successful outcomes. So Cochrane FCSS and United Way partnership mandates are diverse and it's because of this they strengthen our positions to support, support community health to achieve positive change and build strong communities. The United Way focuses on addressing basic community needs and assisting populations. The FCSS mandate focuses on prevention, 
promoting volunteerism and community development. The United Way Cochrane Partnership and Cochrane FCSS are committed to supporting programs that demonstrate value in Cochrane and area. All funded programs are expected to address a need in the community to build on community capacity and strengths and programs are monitored for successful outcomes. Our commitment is to ensure that sound financial management and strong governance are in place wherever community funds are expended. For 2019, the FCSS, and Kim's put a spreadsheet up on the overhead, uh, the FCSS Advisory Board is proud to advise you that the United Way Cochrane Par Partnership and FCSS are recommending funding for, funding for 14 local programs and initiatives, totaling the 120,000. The funds are requested for this, the funds requested for this year was 199,110 from organizations providing preventative and intervention based programs to meet the needs of our community. Over the past five years, the funding requests that we received from community groups has nearly doubled. In 2015, it was 104,000. The requests have already increased with this year, the request totaling nearly 200,000. We are working on a fundraising plan, and last year Cochrane United Way Partnership and two, had two funding, fundraising functions, and through this we successfully raised an additional $8,000 that will help us provide additional funding to our vulnerable communities. This year the FCS Board and the United Way Partnership will be looking at our fundraising through initiatives that will focus on raising awareness and th strengthen our position to support our community health to achieve positive change and build a strong community. We want to improve lives locally and ensure local programs are there to help our community face complex social issues and improve their lives when they need it most. One of our goals is to increase our reach, boost engagement and ed educate the community on the services FCSS provides and the support available through the agencies and initiatives at FCSS and the United Way Fund. In closing, you'll see from the spreadsheet the funding recommendations outlined by the FCSS Advisory Board. We believe these programs are all providing a valuable service that is helping to address the complex social issues facing our community. So we thank you for your time and we look forward to your recommendation. Are there any questions? Oops. Well, thank you for your presentation. <laughs> and thank you for all the work that your board has done uh, to present this to us tonight. Uh, Council, are there questions? Councillor Padeco, you have one? Uh, no, I'm actually going to put the recommended action on the floor that Council uh, approve the grant funding recommendations outlined uh, by Cochrane FCSS. And as a board member, I'm happy, uh, I'm happy to see this come forward. Um, I just wanted to make sure that Council understood that um, a lot of the organizations that are listed here are other organizations that have also uh, look for funds, but this is specific for specific programming versus um, organization. And I don't know if you wanted to speak to that a little bit, just so that they have a clear understanding that it's not just going to an overall operational budget or anything like that. For sure. So over the past couple of years, we, we have made a shift and we are asking groups to apply for specific programs. A lot of the agencies that we fund are fairly large and they have big budgets and it's hard to see what ten or $15,000 does when you're looking to pool that big. So we've had asked groups now to apply for a specific program that we're funding so we can gather outcomes and know exactly what our dollars are achieving. Thank you. Perfect. That's a good question. Thanks for clarifying that. Uh, Councillor Flowers. Just wanted to say great presentation. Good to see three new programs being supported for children, seniors, and the new Hospice Society here in Cochrane. All really valuable projects, so great work as usual. Uh, the one uh, program, Western Rocky View Family and Community Resource Center, uh, is getting no funding, but that's because last year's funding is carrying over to this year? That's your note, but I just... Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so okay. the Resource Centre applied for funds in 2018. I believe they received $7,600 in 2018. And they had some challenges getting that pilot project up and running. But youth mental health is a huge issue in our community, so our board made the decision to allow them to hold over those funds to this year so it doesn't impact the 2019 budget. Good. 
Thank you. I had the same concern. All right. No other questions? The motion on the floor is to approve. Yeah. All those in favor? Carried. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving into bylaws. Hart? Yes. Ah, good catch. Okay. You were ill for the public hearing. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Ms. Crosby, land use redesignation for Heartland. Yeah, so good evening, uh, Mayor and Council. Tonight I will be presenting administration's second and third reading report for bylaw 36 2018. Administration has received a land use bylaw amendment for the redesignation of nine parcels of land in the community of Heartland to be rezoned from residential high density multi unit dwelling district RM to residential single and two dwelling district R2. The red star represents the subject area located within the town of Cochrane's boundary. The yellow star indicates the area of the proposed redesignation within the community of Heartland. The land use concept map shows the current zoning of the adjacent lands. The highlighted brown portion is the area of land to be considered for the rezoning to R2. The purpose of the redesignation is to accommodate the future development of six semi-detached dwellings and three street-oriented townhomes. Both the RM and the R2 district purpose and intent is to allow for a mix of dwelling units in the various housing forms. However, the proposed uses are not listed in the RM district and are better suited in the, for the R2 district, which allows for the construction of semi-detached dwellings and street-oriented townhomes and would allow the developer to meet the requirements for the minimum lot area. The proposed development of semi-detached homes and townhomes are consistent with the existing townhome and multi-unit dwelling fourplexes development in the area. The land use bylaw amendment supports the municipal development plan adopted by council in 2008. It also is consistent with the Heartland Area Structure Plan and the land use concept map 5 and conceptual sub subdivision plan map 6. The red star shown on the land use concept map on the left shows the location of the proposed lots located in the area zone residential. The conceptual subdivision plan on the right shows the location of the parcels of land zoned as residential semi-detached townhomes. The proposed developments meets the purpose and intent of the land use bylaw residential single and two dwelling district R2 and is consistent with the existing development of townhomes and multi-unit dwelling fourplexes in the area. These site photos show the existing townhomes looking west on Belgian Lane. The subject property is in the foreground. This is looking north at the subject property. There are existing townhomes on the left, which are on the west side. These are townhomes adjacent to the subject property to the south. These are multi-unit dwellings, fourplexes looking east of the subject property. These are townhomes to the west of the vacant land. The nine parcels of land are existing individually titled lots that would meet the land use bylaw minimum front, side, and rear yard setbacks in the R2 district. Lot 13 would require a 12% variance on the lot area, and lot 14 would require a 3% variance on the lot area. Administration supports the variance to accommodate the proposed semi-detached dwellings on the existing lots. These are the proposed units being proposed for 5 and 7 Belgian Lane, which are the semi-detached dwellings. The street-orientated townhomes proposed for 9, 11, and 13 Belgian Lane. The uh, semi-detached dwellings for 15 and 17 Belgian Lane. And the semi-detached dwellings for 19 and 21 Belgian Lane. So the land use bylaw amendment was circulated to internal departments and external agencies. No comments were raised. The amendment was presented to CPC on December the 12th. They did express concerns with the 12% variance. 
for, uh, for lot 13. However, they recognize that the lots are existing and therefore are super supportive of the proposed low density of lots and support the proposed land use bylaw amendment. There was a pu public hearing held on January the 14th and it was advertised in the Cochrane Eagle um, on January 3rd and January 10th. Administration is recommending that council gives uh, second and third reading of bylaw 36 uh, 2018. That concludes my presentation. I would be happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you for your presentation. Councilor Reed, I'll first on the button. I'll move option one that Council give a second reading to bylaw 36 2018. No comments? Nope. Okay. Councilor Nagel? I would just uh, add that I'd be happy to support this motion. I think it's nice to see a reduction in uh, the density of our housing. I think the proposed land uses are going to be a good fit in that area. No other comments. I actually I agree. I think it's the same. Uh, lower of reduction and the similar units to the surrounding area. I think fits. So, no other comments. Okay. Call the question. All in favor of second reading? Carried. You want to carry on the third reading? I would move the uh, third reading then of bylaw 36 2018 for the same reasons. Okay. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Crosby. You should grab Councillor McFadden. Thank you. Maybe grab is the wrong word. Hail. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't here, so it went very smoothly. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, land use bylaw amendment, Central Business District. All right, so tonight I'll be presenting bylaw. 05 2019 for a land use bylaw amendment for first reading. Administration has received an application to amend the land use bylaw and add vehicle wash minor as a site specific use to the central business district, civically known as 354 Railway Street. The purpose and intent of the central business district is to provide for pedestrian oriented commercial developments serving the town and surrounding rural areas. The uses will be those that promote the downtown as Cochrane's primary area of community, social interaction and a focus of civic and cultural identity. Vehicle wash minor is defined as a building used for cleaning of motor vehicles which may employ automatic self-served or self-service wash facilities. Vehicle wash minor is limited to two bays or less where the wash bays can wash one motor vehicle equal to or less than 4,536 kilograms at a time. The red star represents the subject area of the land use bylaw amendment located in the downtown community. The red star indicates the location of the site specific vehicle wash uh, minor is proposed at 354 Railway Street. This land use concept map shows the current zoning of the adjacent lands. The black star represents the subject area of the land use bylaw amendment for the site specific vehicle wash minor. And again, the purpose of the bylaw 052109 is to present to council a land use bylaw amendment for first reading for site specific vehicle wash minor in the central business district as a discretionary use. The site was approved in 2002 for a service station muffler and lube shop. The lube shop continues to operate. However, the a remaining portion of the building is currently vacant and the landowner has secured a tenant. As vehicle wash minor is neither a permitted nor a discretionary use in the central business district, therefore in order for the use to be considered, the land use bylaw must be amended to include it as a use in the district. Administration recommends that council give first reading of bylaw 052019 and sets a public hearing date for mo Monday, February 25th, 2019. That concludes my presentation. Okay, thank you. That's all. First reading. Anyone? Councillor Wilson. I'll move first reading of bylaw 5 2019. All those in favor? Carried. Thank you. You want to set the public hearing as well? I'll also move that we set the public hearing for bylaw 5 2019 for the date of February 25th. February 25th. 
All in favor? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Old business for the new bridge. <laughs> I think your microphone's not on. <laughs> Mr. Devana. Good evening. Um, I'm just going to go uh, briefly over the uh, bridge naming report, and I've got Lori here if you want to ask any questions about the uh, consultation process that we went to get to this point. Um, but bit briefly, um, in phase one, uh, we got 213 suggestions. Uh, of those, 124 were considered to be unique uh, suggestions that would fit into the, into the policy. Um, the phase two results have resulted, so if you could go down. have resulted in us short listing. We wanted to short list uh, 10 choices, uh, but um, the 10th and 11th choice had the same amount of votes, so we weren't able to, uh, uh, we didn't want to eliminate one of those, and so we have got 11 uh, unique names that uh, we would, uh, we're recommending that uh, you, uh, send out to the public for them to conduct a vote. Uh, we would like to conduct our vote uh, with an online vote and paper ballots that can be uh, obtained at the Victoria Information Center, the Seniors on the Bow, and the Cochrane Public Library. The timeline for the vote would be January 29th, 2019 to February 28th, 2019 and the uh, vote is to be conducted that one has to pick their number one choice and only one choice and uh, and then we will bring you back the results of the vote uh, after February 28th uh, for your approval so we are recommending option one that council confirm the final names for the bridge and direct administration to go out to the community for a final vote. Okay, thank you. Exciting. Councillor Nagel. I would like to move option one, the recommended action, uh, but I'd also like to ask some questions about the integrity of our online voting. Uh, it's my understanding that our voting only allows uh, somebody to vote once per IP address. My concern is there's a lot of people these days who use uh, VPNs for Netflix and stuff like that, and with a simple click on a VPN, it allows people to uh, vote over and over and over. So I'm wondering if we could add an extra layer of uh, protection, like uh, having the online voters have to include their full name along with each vote, so we reduce the possibility of duplication. We, I suppose we could do that. I don't see why we couldn't. My concern about restricting IP addresses is that you would only allow one member of a family, for instance, to vote. Um, uh, one person in any business or home. So the Cochrane Ranch House has one IP address. Whoever gets their vote in first would restrict everybody else from voting. But it's not a bad idea to add, to make people put their full names in. Okay, we'll use a name to, to uh, Perfect. filter out the double votes. Okay, great. Mr. Fideko? Uh, I just wanted to kind of figure out where, where is it going to be held? Is it on Let's Talk Cochrane or is it going yes. to be on the town administration site? Okay. Yeah. Just so oh, we know where talk. to direct people. Thank you. We were hoping that the media would pick up on the story as well and encourage people to, um, to vote so we get a good turnout. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, awesome. Perfect. Uh, just to, to further to your comment, Councillor Nagel, what's the concern over more than one per? Or w your your concern is that one person would vote multiple times. Um, what's the concern with that? I'm not saying I'm against it or. Well,
All right. Is it, uh, so you're saying it's that we can do that? It's not a hard thing to administer? To My only concern is individuals who may have the same name. How do we know it's not the same person? Well, I mean, what, what a person should do is you have to make an account with an email and you put your name and address on there and the account is what you vote from. I mean, somebody could make multiple accounts with multiple emails and a fake name, but that would be a lot more strenuous than just having people be able to just visit a website and hit refresh after changing their IP address. I mean, it's, I think it's worth our organization uh, sorting out how to do really accurate online votes anyways. So we could look at this as a learning opportunity for future online voting. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll have to check yeah, out what's can. possible. I mean, yeah. yeah. Okay. Just wanted to understand a little further where you're going. That's good. Yeah. It's not like American Idol. <laughs> it's not American Idol. No. No. This is. Uh, I'm happy to see we're at this point. Um, there was some consideration of having less names. I'm glad we've gone with more to give the uh, opportunity to the community to uh, really have a hand in naming the bridge. Um, and I look forward to seeing which one of these 11 makes it through to the final balloting. And just to be clear, um, when that final name does come forward, the administration is going to, it says in the report, but you're going to uh, consult whoever the name, you know, if it's a name of a person or a, uh, I see we have a, some indigenous names, we would consult with all of the. Yeah, we, um, yeah, we absolutely have to consult. We got to make sure that the people are okay with the name being used, and uh, and for our First Nation neighbors, uh, yeah. it's very important that we consult with them prior to any final selection. Okay, and that so that would be that would be part of the process. Yes, yeah. perfect. Okay, thank you. Oh, Councillor McFadden, you have a question. Uh, yes. So I was uh, the start date. I think was initially pegged for this month, right? But should we give a little bit more time? to set up proper security on this. Um, I don't need this to start this week. I would much prefer that we have a system that people are comfortable with. So okay. if we, we need to extend the start date to make sure that we have a system that we're all comfortable with. I mean, if somebody really wants to spend hours and hours and hours manipulating it, I guess that can happen. But I would much prefer we create a system where people are engaging and they have confidence that, um, you know, it's. One person, one vote. Yeah. Our intent is for a 30-day voting period. Okay. So we'll start it when we're ready, and it'll go from 30 days from that point. Perfect. So then we maybe we don't tie it to the date. Um, I would also like it to be simple, like not a, you know, fill in 14 forms to vote. Otherwise, we may not get many people to vote, right? So simple. But I know that's what you'll go yep. ahead for. So thank you. You guys got to vote. All in favor of the recommended action. Carried, thank you. We're inching closer to naming the bridge. Motions on notice. Councillor Wilson. I think uh, we have a, hold on. I'm lost on my agenda here. It is your notice of motion. Okay. There we go. I'm with you now. Yeah. So on December 10th, I brought forward a notice of motion, or at least a notice of a notice of motion, in the interest of increasing future transparency and public accountability. I move that administration be directed to implement a new council voting structure to future budgets namely that all contested line items are formally voted upon and that the results of those votes are clearly displayed within the finished budget and on Cochrane.ca along with the posted budget. And if I'm allowed any yeah, ending. Oh, it's yeah. your motion. Yeah. yeah. And so the, the goal of this is simply uh, to not create much more work. I'm not looking to be onerous on administration with this. I would just like a little bit more transparency for the public to see what their elected representatives are voting on, on at budget time because right now it's just consensus carries and nobody, unless you watch the entire lengthy video, nobody has any idea who voted for what and 
how we came to our conclusions, in my opinion. So I just wanted as simple as possible to have some, um, I, I guess, written uh, transparency on how your counselors voted for any uh, contentious items. And also, I guess the other thing in here is that um, there's thousands of line items if we wanted to actually go through it. But out of those thousands of items, I think we came down to maybe, if I was to guess, 10, 15 items at most that were even uh, challenged or voted upon. So I'm only focusing on the 10 or 15 items and not looking to on onerously slow down our budget process, which is pretty good in my opinion. So I think this is a small change, I hope, and I hope it's something that can be done easily and will have a net benefit. See anybody weighing in? I'll, uh, I'll, Councilor Nagel. I was just going to say I think this is a great motion. Um, as someone who's voted against a lot of different budgets, I've always felt that there's not a lot of opportunity to express your concern on particular areas, and when you just disagree with a few items, it leads you to, at least myself, uh, to wanting to vote against the entire budget when really it's like 90% of the budget's pretty good, and there's only 10% that I really had to hang up on, and I think uh, splitting this out for different votes would make me more comfortable to vote in on future budgets. Councilor Reed. Yeah, I just want to speak in support of this. I think it's a really good motion, and I think it, this council has gone on record as being uh, one that speaks about transparency, and I think this is uh, an appropriate move in, that in the right direction. Okay. Uh, I have no concern with the motion, other than I wonder if we actually need it. Uh, reading through the administrative comments, and this is a question to administration. Um, the way I'm reading your comments is that, uh, I think it's Ms. Lowe, um, right now when we are sitting at budget, we waive our procedural bylaw, which essentially allows me to discuss things and, and have council uh, do our kind of deliberations as we've done them over the, well, as long as I can remember in, in Cochrane, uh, without having to vote on every single decision. Um, so. During that process, we could, uh, again, say, ask for minutes, and this is what I'm reading here, is essentially a minutes of our budget that could be included at that time. So through the chair for clarity, there are minutes that are generated um, as a result of budget deliberations, but they are simply minutes that capture the resolution of council to call the meeting to order to waive the procedural right. bylaw any time that you temporarily adjourn and recall, and then adjournment. Uh, what the suggestion is, is that as an alternative, what could be done is as council moves through that debate, you could, whether it applies to all matters or only those that are contentious, request that administration capture a vote that would be in principle. So it, because you are not approving any of the budget items during the debate, um, the motion could be that council approve line item, whatever the item is, in principle, you thereafter would vote, we could capture by that vote who is opposed and who is in favor of the item and then that would be captured in your minutes of the budget debate. Those minutes are part of the public record that is uh, created and then that could be brought forward. They could specifically be brought forward at the same time as the budget is pre presented to council for full adoption. Okay, so does that satisfy what you were looking for to accomplish with this motion, so Councillor Wilson? Will that be readily accessible to the public? Um, is it possibly to be readily accessible within the bu printed budget itself? I assume no from what I just heard. Mr. Um, Devanna? <clears throat> what I think is appropriate is that, uh, that the minutes capture uh, the areas where you have a difference of opinion and the vote. And I, and I feel that the, uh, the uh, final report that's brought to council can also capture those votes so it's clear when, when the, uh, when the uh, budget is presented for approval where the areas of uh, uh, disagreement were. Um, but my personal opinion is that the budget is approved by council as a group. So the actual document, uh, not the supporting documents, meaning the report and the minutes, but the actual document is either approved or not approved. And I, I personally don't feel that the uh, budget document should lay out uh, where you had disagreements. Uh, I, 
think everything up to that point could be much more clear than it has been to this point. So I, I appreciate that, Mr. Devana. Where, where would a member of the public be able to find, if not in the written document itself, then it would be somewhere online on the Cochrane.ca website, or would you only be able to view those records if you were to view the, when, when the budget was proposed in front of council, it would be announced? We could have the minutes uh, posted uh, and the report posted with the approved budget so that people can look at those documents and find out that Councillor McFadden did not agree with this item, and uh, Councillor Flowers didn't agree with that item. But in the body of the the document, the document is owned by council as a whole. And if council says that they approve it five to two, then the document is approved. It's not approved with a subject to this disagreement, subject to that disagreement. So that's my concern. Um, you know, we could do what you're directing us to do, but I, I don't think it's the appropriate thing to do. Yeah. I think the supporting documents can do what you want them to do. I'm, I'm essentially looking to have, as we would in a, in a council meeting, you can view on the council, council agenda afterwards how, uh, how something was voted on, and that would achieve the same thing here if we were able to go back and, and not in the written document itself, but online view what the votes, and so that would achieve okay both our goals. Yeah. yeah, excellent. Okay. Yes. If I could provide some clarity, all minutes of council are public document, so those minutes would come forward similarly to every other set of minutes that you have. They do currently. Um, they just don't currently capture those decisions in principle. Um, but those minutes come forward for council's adoption. They can be located both where all of the minutes of council are included, that's live on the agendas that are published as well as on the website. Um, and then they will also be included with the supporting documents to your adopted budget, which includes council's presentation as well. Okay, thank you. I'm, uh, I, I'm happy with that as long as we have an easier way to access these for the public on the Cochrane.ca website. I'm going to choose my, my ends here. So I'd like to hear what others have to say. Okay, Councillor Pradeco. Uh, I'm not against the idea. I, I would hope that maybe we could, um, maybe there's a time stamping way of hearing that debate because just looking at like a yes or no, like five yeses, two noes, the whole point of streaming is to kind of hear the discussion around why you voted that way or why somebody voted in favor. So I guess I just want to make sure that we could link those up if it was going to be posted somewhere separate so that people could click right there and it's on that particular debate. Maybe not all of them, maybe just the really highly contentious ones again. So our current program that uh, we utilize for live streaming has the ability to timestamp within the video. So that's possible for sure. Yeah, especially if you're going to link it in two separate places, just so that people know that they can go right there and find it on the same document. Correct. Thank you. My point I was trying to make earlier is that I don't think we need a motion to do this. I think we can move this at every budget if you want and go with it at that point. We already have a motion at the beginning of our budget deliberations to suspend or change whatever we're doing in that meeting. In that moment, we can say, please, record the minutes of these items as we get to them. I think um, my fear is that part of this, of your intent will get lost and that uh, we're not doing it. You know what I mean? It's, I'll let uh, Councillor McFadden maybe assist me. Just cause I don't know where you're going, but. No, I, well, no, I, th I think so. I think you're there with um, what I was thinking. So as I understand it, um, our existing procedural bylaw allows council to amend the budget process in the moment to do what you want to do. And I completely agree, the more transparent we are, the better. So that's how I understood the response from administration. Um, and that's great. My, it's certainly been my experience that the uh, media has never missed a moment to not point out when we have discrepancies. So those usually get fairly well recorded and broadcast better than the minutes ever will. But uh, anyway, I completely applaud the direction. Um, I think maybe one time, uh, one of our strat planning sessions, we should maybe do a procedural by a, um, review <laughs> for council so that we just kind of all understand the tools that we have already. Um, because yeah, I think this is already covered off. So anyway, I applaud the direction, but I think we're there. We just have to make sure that we give that clear direction in the budget process. Okay. 
Um, well, Councillor Wilson, go ahead. Uh, so, so in a, in a nutshell, what what have uh, what, what's the decision here? I'm I'm, I'm sort of I, I'm unsure about. So it, we won't be including it in the written document. That's fine. I just want somewhere easily accessible on Cochrane.ca to see under the budget heading uh, any contested line items, how the votes went, who voted for what is essentially what I'm looking for. And so I don't understand how that tool is currently available to us and how I'd access it then, I, I suppose. I think what I understand would happen is, just like this council meeting tonight, the minutes and the agenda and the live stream would all be put on our website and someone could go through and look just like they do at these minutes. No. Right. Right. Yeah, which is excellent. That's all I'm looking for here. That's that's perfect. Yeah. So I'm sa saying that I don't think you need your motion. Okay. You could retract it, and that we could do this at budget time, exactly how you want to do it. Okay. Fair. I appreciate the conversation, and that, that achieves the end. So. Yeah. I'll retract my motion, and nothing. No need to vote on it. I suppose. Okay. Okay. Look forward to the next budget, and when we yeah. Yeah. keep track. Uh, mayor's report. I'll keep it brief. Um, <laughs> two minutes or less. Yeah. Uh, it's been light. The agenda, actually, for me over the last couple of weeks has been uh, less, which has actually been uh, a goal of mine. Um, not have as many meetings, but have more meaningful meetings. Um, so I continue to meet, uh, go to the developer liaison meeting. I feel that that is uh, having an impact, and I'm you know, really hearing a lot of good things from uh, that group, and they're, um, I look forward to uh, the things that they're coming forward with in the future. Um, at the last one, we went over 2018, and then um, I kind of went over our vision for 2019 and our work plan that Council saw at our strategic session that we've been talking about over the last couple weeks. I um, was happy to attend the Chamber Luncheon with uh, Mr. John Huffnagel there. It was an uh, interesting conversation to hear how he has uh, operated in his life and uh, a lot of the same pillars that he uh, applies to himself is uh, something that I think we should all attest to. Um, honesty, integrity, truth, those types of things. So um, he had a, it was a good speech and well attended. Um, rec board, I think, Councillor Reed, you'll speak to. Uh, just one of the highlights of the last couple of weeks was the um, inauguration of Chief Clifford Pousset uh, with the Wesley Band in uh, Morley. And um, so I was honored to be uh, asked to go to attend, um, which Mr. Devana and I and uh, Rebecca Friels from uh, our office uh, attended. It was an uh, interesting, very uh, moving ceremony with uh, uh, ornate dancers and songs and drumming and uh, it was just uh, it was just really proud to be a part of that whole uh, ceremony. But then I think what moved me the most was at the end, and I wasn't expecting this at all, and I don't think anybody was, at least from our team. Um, just walked out and shook hands with a couple of people and stood there, and then we formed a kind of a receiving line, almost like a wedding, and every single person, man, woman, child, um, shook all of our hands on the way out of the the hall and I would guess there was probably a couple hundred people there <laughs> so it took us uh, a, quite a while to receive them all and I was standing next to Chief Young and he explained to me that this was a tradition of theirs that how they close a ceremony and uh, grab hands and shake hands and human touch and connection and from the heart uh, close the uh, ceremony so it was uh, it was actually it was pretty cool like um, to be a part of that and a lot of the uh, um, members in attendance there thanked me for uh, being there so I think uh, we've made a, a, a stride forward in our connection with uh, our neighbors so it was it was a very good day very long ceremony and long exit of the ceremony <laughs> but it was really good uh, CMRB land use committee we were back we're meeting again um, it was a good Good meeting this past week. Um, Boys and Girls Club, 
attended that with uh, Councillor Flowers and Councillor Fideco for uh, the grand opening of the club. It's exciting to see that. And the only other two things I've been working on are uh, this small mid-sized cities event that's happening this week, which uh, is ramping up f quickly, rapidly, Wednesday, Thursday this week. So um, as I mentioned, we have confirmation from all the party leaders. Uh, it's been an enormous amount of work internally. I want to thank publicly uh, Kristen from our office and Rebecca and the whole administration team for the support. Uh, it's been massive from, you know, way larger than what I envisioned when uh, I put my hand up to say we would host this. It's a really achieving what I had hoped, and that is put Cochrane on the map. But to do so, we've actually, we've really had to do a lot of work. Uh, security, for example, of uh, having this many public figures in one space, uh, including the Premier and uh, for sure the next Premier of our province in the building. Um, so it's it's been a huge undertaking. So how we're handling it, um, even just today we heard from the Premier about questions and how they're going to be asked and um, who's going to be in the room and all, all these types of things. So it's been a, it's a lot of work. So uh, very excited to have it, but uh, it'll be good to have behind us as well and hopefully it'll uh, a huge success. Um, the other one is the uh, stair climb challenge that I've undertaken. I finally signed up, so uh, if uh, I need your help to get to the top, um, whether it be uh, financial or just spreading the word to get other people to go online to uh, help me raise my goal of, uh, I'm going to say $20,000, <laughs> and we'll hope to reach somewhere close. But uh, yeah, so it's a challenge the chief is the uh, category that I'm in. So uh, starting on Friday, we don our gear and start training with uh, helmets and fire gear. And if it's any uh, consolation, the guy who laps, Mr. Devana and I, is now at my speed with when I'm not wearing gear. <laughs> and he's been wearing gear now, so it's uh, going to slow us down. So that's my report. Where do we go for that? Uh, I will send out a link. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you for that. Does anyone else have a report? I saw your light on, Councillor Nagel. Well, am I on? Okay. I was, I was just to say, um, SDAB has been reviewing a number of uh, marijuana distribution applications. I tr decided I wasn't going to do a marriage report because. Or, Council report, uh, just because a lot of what we discussed was in camera, but I guess the interesting point for council is that our uh, first come first serve 150 meter setback policy was heavily tested by SDAB, and can't comment on the rationale or decisions. But I see there have been a couple of notice of decisions coming out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, thanks, Councillor Flowers. Just wanted to comment on the teen club. It was great to see their new space and a place for the youth to hang out and connect and have see role modeling by the staff there. It's a beautiful location, and if you haven't seen it, you should check it out. We had our library meeting the other day, and um, Mr. Murphy joined us and got to know the library board and um, the exciting things that are ahead. They would like to come to one of our strategic planning sessions to talk about some of their issues and happenings that are going on, but uh, they're moving forward. When is your next library board meeting? I think February is cancelled. If you could so just send me the date. Okay. I wouldn't mind attending one okay. of those. I haven't been yet. Will do. Thanks. Councilor McFadden? Yeah, um, a couple of different things. Um, hats off to uh, Councilor Fideco, who hosted one of her pop up booths. And I hung out with her for a couple hours, whatever Sunday that was, and we talked ourselves hoarse connecting with people, so that was a lot of fun. Um, through my uh, work with the AUMA, I've somehow managed to find myself on an FCM committee uh, talking about um, uh, toward parity, and it's a FCM initiative to look at uh, encouraging more women to run uh, and to serve uh, in municipal government. Uh, the goal is to get up, think up to 30%. Uh, so they're doing a little bit of research on why women aren't running, the barriers, that might be there and maybe make some recommendations to help reduce those barriers. So uh, that meeting just had two two meetings so far. The position I'm in is just 
part of the guidance committee. Uh, I think they have $450,000. They're going to do some research and uh, some survey work. And then uh, at the end of the day, they're hoping to be able to provide about $100,000 in grants to maybe get something done. So I'll keep you guys updated on that one. Um, I did want to also um, ask council for a letter of support. Uh, this is coming from the Glenbow Ranch Park Foundation. And um, for anybody who doesn't know, the Glenbow Ranch Park Foundation is the nonprofit that has been established to uh, support both the uh, build out of the Glenbow Ranch Provincial Park and also the um, uh, park programming. Uh, on the park, so it's, it's a unique model within the uh, provincial park system. They've been in place for probably about seven or eight years now, um, and they do a lot of good work. Uh, they are at this point asking for a um, letter of support from council to apply for um, uh, funding to the Cochrane Foundation. So I'll just quickly read the letter. Um, I'll try to do it efficiently and clearly and council can decide if they would be in favor of offering a letter of support. So the uh, letter to council is the Honorable Mayor and Council, the Glenbow Ranch Park Foundation is planning on hosting an event for Indigenous Day 2019 at Glenbow Ranch Provincial Park. This event will celebrate and share the rich culture of our Indigenous neighbors, the Stony Nakoda. We envision the raising of a teepee, traditional dancing, storytelling, drumming, singing, and Indigenous games all within our event. Stone Dakota Elder Virgil Stevens has committed to partner with us for this date, June 21st, and is very excited to help represent the Morley region within our park. We also plan to engage local Indigenous youth and are currently reaching out to Cochrane Area Schools. As a nonprofit organization, we rely on obtaining grants, partners, and sponsors to fund our special events, which include this very special day. Through our historic partnerships with Cochrane Immigrant Services Committee and FCSS, we understand that work the town administration is doing aligns very well with this event. While we are not currently requesting any financial contribution from the town, we are keen to invite key partners to the table early on to explore the sustainability of such an important bridge building and educational initiative. It is our understanding that several town-led Indigenous education partnerships have provided feedback that would support a locally held National Indigenous Day celebration. We are applying for the Cochrane Foundation's new Neighbors Grant that is specifically for events that bring community together. The max is 5,000 and since the event, including staff time, will run around uh, 15 to 20,000, we are asking the town of Cochrane to partner with us for this event by writing us a letter of support so that we might apply for additional grants to help with event costs and perhaps engage other volunteers or assistants to make this day a success. The town's letter of support would help to provide the platform for us to pursue additional dollars. Uh, if we require any other information, we can contact their executive director, Sarah Parker. So at this point, uh, they're just asking for our support uh, through a letter from our council that they can then use to leverage um, grant applications. So I guess I put a motion on the floor to ask for that letter of support. All right. I missed that total. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just kidding. Um, not a question about my support for the group or not or the day, but do we have our own Indigenous Day planned at all? I know not at this point. Um, uh, Mayor Janong, to answer your question, no, not at this point. We will partner with Glenbow Ranch to, to work on that with them. Okay, so this would be a, a regional administrative support mm -hmm. to Absolutely. ask us to support? Yes. Okay. Any other discussion on the, oh, sorry, Councillor Wilson? See your lights on. Yeah, it's it's not regarding this. Oh, before we vote, we should yeah. just do a vote if we're doing that. Yeah. I just wanted to say I think it's a great initiative. I think we should support it. Okay. All those in favor of the letter of support? Carried. Thank you. Thanks for bringing that forward. Councillor <laughs> <laughs> <Dr>. Wilson. <laughs> Finally, mine's not a councillor report, it's just very briefly um, thank you and support for what's happening this week with the mid-sized mayors hosting. I think during the last election we, I think all of us from what I, from what I heard recognized that perhaps raising our profile a little bit within the province because we have to work so closely with our provincial government to achieve some of the things we want to achieve in the community is paramount and the fact that we're raising our profile quite obviously I think we're, we're stepping up pretty big with this stuff that it's, uh, it's exciting and uh, my support and thanks to everybody that took part in doing that and I'm happy to help however, even though I haven't helped, I'm happy to help the days of just to make it a success. So thanks to everybody, I'm excited about it. 
think the best help you could be on is attend both yeah. days. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. That's it for reports. Uh, get a motion to move in camera. We have an in camera item. Councillor Flowers, all in, all in favor of moving in camera? It's carried. Thank you. There's likely not to be a decision coming out of camera. Or? No? Okay. All in favor? Everyone's in favor? Good? Okay. We're adjourned. Thank you.